We have a clear sky alert, finally. This night I will set up my telescope and camera and photograph a distant nebula in the night sky. And most importantly, I want to test three new pieces of equipment. And all of them are red. I'm filming the intro in here because it's still very cold outside. In the last video I unboxed the ZWO ASI 2600 and the ASI Air Mini. Both of those were sent to me by ZWO for review and I am very sure that I will miss them once the review is done. In this video I want to talk about my first experiences and most importantly set up this bad boy over here to hopefully get a good image of the pinwheel galaxy or move my entire telescope equipment to another balcony to get another last shot at Orion. This is not the official review. I nonetheless want to share some of the most important aspects I've come to realize. Because there have been two clear nights already, which I don't really want to talk about. The camera works really well in combination with the Acer Air Mini, just plug and play, no issues at all. I set the gain to 100, because according to ZWO and basically everybody else, that's like a sweet spot where the high gain mode is switched on. In the upcoming nights I will maybe test this at gain 0 and maybe maximum, just to test everything out. Back then I slapped the camera onto my usual rig, the TechnoSky refractor over here, and I got a night's worth on the Pleiades. From this night I learned three important things. First, stop 3D printing custom star diffraction masks. It's not worth it on a refractor. Second, I need to get a better device to take flat frames. Which is already done. And third, the sensor of this camera is too big for one and a quarter inch filters. And I learned that the hard way. I own a good 2 inch broadband light pollution filter, but I don't own any 2 inch narrowband filters. And that's where I reached out to ZWO again and they were kind enough to send me their 2 inch dual narrowband filter, which I guess will now also be on the list of things to test. These dual narrowband filters are for moonlit nights with a color camera. And guess what? The next night will be almost a full moon. I had to ditch the filter wheel and I also installed the electronic focusing motor with my custom 3D printed adapter, which I am really proud of. This entire rig will be out tonight. But first, I want to take a quick intermission regarding this filter. I am a student of optics and machine vision, which means I have access to really expensive machinery to test the actual transmission of these filters. Tomorrow I will take you with me on a journey to the University of Applied Science in Darmstadt to test the transmission of this filter with nanometer precision. I bet that WO did not expect that when they sent me this filter. And with the magic of editing, here you go. This is the Lambda 650. It works by splitting white light through a prism and reflecting the individual wavelengths onto the object by rotating mirrors. It's really cool. But first we need to calibrate the device without the filter. Which takes a long time. 
But once that's done, the filter is inserted, making sure that this small band of light is on there and we can start. The final result will be analyzed in the review. But now the part I'm most excited about. And here we are, look at this beautiful clear night sky. The target is, as you can see over there, the constellation Orion. The telescope is right over there. The ASI 2600, the ZWO filter and the ASI Air Mini is down there in the tripod. Of course, do heat is attached, it's gonna get very cold tonight. And now let's focus on the stars again. Look at this, it's beautiful. This airplane is going right through Alnitec in a few seconds and maybe, yeah, I think it touched the, almost touched the horse head nebula over there. And now I want to test something. I bought this laser pointer recently on the web and it packs a punch. So we have the horse head nebula at the bright star Alnitec right over there. Down there is the Orion nebula, beautiful. Up there is the star that caused so much trouble in the re in the recent years, Betelgeuse, because it was dimming. And there's Sirius. Let me get it into frame. I guess pointing things out with the la laser pointer like this is much more fun. There's Sirius, the brightest star in our night sky. I will maybe make a special video about laser pointers. Just so you know, I am authorized and tested on using high high power laser pointers, but you cannot be careful enough. This laser pointer has about 50 milliwatts in the visible spectrum and 60 milliwatts in the infrared. So it's very dangerous to the eye. One blink is enough and your eye is gone. So with a laser pointer like this, be hella careful. And there are the Pleiades, beautiful to look at as always. Is there anything else we can look at tonight while the telescope is taking the first exposures of the Horsehead Nebula? I did my small trip to the university today to test, to actually measure the transmission of the filter and I was quite impressed. I think it will do a great job on the Horsehead Nebula. So the stars we can see in the Orion constellation up there, we have... <laughs> and that's where the laser pointer gave up its power. This laser pointer is really chewing through the batteries. I need to actually be careful not to take too many steps on this balcony because it's throwing auto-guiding completely off. I'm glad that ZWO gave me a chance to test this camera along with the decent filter because the moon will be rising over there very soon. You can see it's already getting very bright over there. And that's not just Frankfurt. But let's see what this camera and telescope and filter combination, I guess, can actually do. And now I will try to take a time-lapse. <laughs> 